Good morning, this is Larry McMillan with a stock market update on Monday, June 22nd before the market opens. So the market was wounded uh, on June 11th when the, it broke down badly, but it's tried to recover since then, although hasn't been able to completely do so. Uh, to recover, it would, would need to close that gap up to uh, 3184 on the S&P chart. Uh, if, the, if it did that, that would be quite bullish. But lacking that, there's still uh, some firepower behind the bears. Uh, on the other hand, they need to see the market break down below support. Say uh, the first support level is 29.65, then 29.20. So if the bears want to get anything going, they're going to have to see the market break down below that as well. <clears throat> uh, we're still not that far from the all-time highs. That there's a gap up to like 30. 3.30 and then the all-time highs at 33.90 so they're still within uh, shouting distance too but of course there's that first uh, move up to 31.84 which would have to take place in addition to all those things there's a modified Bollinger Band sell signal in place now uh, those are usually pretty productive but sometimes after a big move like we've had uh, the first one can be premature the equity only put call ratios still remain on buy signals. They're very low on the chart. In fact, the standard ratio, as we mentioned previously, has gotten down to uh, lows last seen in February of 2004, which is just crazy. Uh, but <clears throat> they're not turning upwards yet. And that's what really was is going to have to take place in order for them to generate sell signals. So they're still overbought, but on buy signals. Uh, breadth had improved a little bit, and so the breadth oscillators are on buy signals, but they're kind of just clinging to those at this point in time. Um, <clears throat> the next area of the market that we like to watch is volatility, and of course volatility has been generally high all along. It never got down to any kind of overbought level. It's been pretty much uh, warning that you know there's there could be trouble. Uh, on the short term, we have a VIX spike peak buy signal, so that's a good thing. Uh, even more short term than that, there was a crossover where VIX crossed down below the uh, the three month VIX. That's also positive. But the negative is that VIX remains above its 200 day moving average. And <clears throat> as long as that's the case, you can go back and look at other crash, you know, super bear markets, and uh, they didn't really end until VIX close below that 200 day so that was even true in 19 in uh, 2009 when it seemed like there was a, a B bottom there but really that was a retest that failed which led to a bottom eventually then VIX did close below its 200 day and the market went up uh, substantially after that so all in all the the bears uh, need to see um, VIX uh, S&P breaking down below 2920 and put call ratio uh, sell signals in order to take charge. The bulls, to, in order to regain control, uh, total control, like say, like they had at the end of last year, beginning of January, uh, would have to see VIX close below its 200-day moving average. So those are the two major uh, things that we're looking for. In between, you can trade all the signals that occur, which we do, of course. And those are all designated in our newsletters, uh, Daily Volume Alerts and uh, The Daily Strategist. Uh, so I invite you to our website to check those out if you haven't done that previously. And otherwise, have a good week trading.